nowadays, almost everything that you look at can't possibly be right, right? There's very, it's a weird feeling, right? The more you know about some theories, the more you are convinced that, well, they may contain some grain of it, but they're surely not right. Quantum mechanics was something shocking. Uh, and it, it is more shocking the more you think about it. Whenever we apply it, we uh, separate the object of interest that we are considering and describing quantum mechanically and the rest of the stuff, in particular ourselves, which we talk and describe in classical terms. We want to understand the emergence of our universe, the evolution of the universe and the evolution of ourselves out of very early simple uh, regime uh, and we want to do use quantum mechanics for for for, uh, for important part of it in particular the emergence of of structure in the universe today and of course we cannot rely on observers making an op measurement or or playing a, or playing a role in affecting that early state we need a universe in which some regions have a little bit more matter some regions are have less matter those regions that have more matter eventually should evolve in, into galaxies so those regions that have less matter should start losing matter towards the things that that eventually become galaxies and will become big voids or, or, or things of that sort uh, and and this step this breaking of this symmetry is something for which ordinary quantum mechanics has no answer. Theories in which uh, you modify the fundamental evolutionary law of quantum mechanics, you modify it in a way that its effect on simple quantum mechanical systems would be very small, but that when uh, dealing with the very large collection of uh, a system made out of very large degrees of freedom, all of them quantum mechanically entangled, would produce very large effects. Early universe is one very simple test ground for this kind of ideas, for testing the interface of quantum theory with this slight modification with quantum, with the gravitation. Another very, very uh, useful testing ground is the black holes, where we face the black hole information uh, part of you. The loss of information that occurs inside the black hole and the loss of information that occurs uh, in any interaction, in any evolution, and in particular that is magnified by the measuring apparatus when you make a large object that is your measuring device interact with a microscopic object which is normally is subject to quantum mechanical treatment. But now treating everything quantum mechanically with this modified uh, uh, direction, the source of violation of unitarity is the same. The feeling that you can come to deal with issues that are completely counterintuitive is a great comfort in, in telling you, provides a great comfort in, in telling you that you're really forcing yourself to interact with nature, with something that is beyond your head. My, my impression is that things that are intuitive are things that, in some sense, your mind is prepared to accept, and then you don't know so much how much comes from the outside and how much it comes from, from the inside. But when you're forced to deal with things that are counterintuitive, it must be something that is outside because your brain really doesn't want to accept it. So. So it's, it's, it's a great feeling that you're really interacting with nature.